वेलकम टू दी लाइफ क्लास दी ओरिएंटेशन सेशन फॉर ए सी सी ए फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट एंड दिस इज योर इंस्ट्रक्टर रिजवान मानिया दिस टाइम वी आर हैविंग एन ओरिएंटेशन फॉर जून एंड सेप्टेम्बर ट्वेंटी फोर अटैम्प्ट सो आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस ओरिएंटेशन सेशन विच बेसिकली विल बी अ वेरी यूजफुल रिसोर्स फॉर यू टू अंडरस्टैंड what the paper financial management is first of all and secondly how we will be teaching this paper and preparing you for june or september 24 attempt whatever you are planning to take so let's now move on uh, with the quick introduction about myself uh, i am into a, this acca teaching since more than uh 14 years in fact i can say more than 16 years now and i teach paper performance management financial management and advanced performance management uh i have been into this teaching since so many years and have taught more than 6000 students uh internationally including uh, the local student and the international students uh plus I have conducted lots and lots of webinars uh, for ACCA under the brand name of P2P. If you know, so uh, six webinars for uh, advanced performance management, and I have conducted eight webinars for performance management. So uh, this is about myself, uh, about my teaching experience. Uh, so now uh, it's time to. move towards the paper and the details about the paper what financial management paper is about but before i get into the details about the paper uh, first of all it is very important that you should know uh, that <coughs> financial management is uh, one of the papers of skill module that prepares you to become uh, the finance manager that sets the basis for you to become a finance manager in future so obviously if you guys uh if you guys know that <laughs> in practical world when you go to industry uh, the three skills are very important uh, for you people to learn and those skill includes the skills of financial reporting it includes the skills of audit and assurance and it includes the skills of finance uh, financial management so these are the three practical approaches that one should know uh, before you enter into the practical world and for that this paper is very important because if you ask any acc student or people who are working in different industries or companies so what they in return say that yes we work in finance department so when what do they mean by finance department is you <coughs> should know that they work in finance department and they should have the skills of financial management one thing i need to uh, again emphasize here is that we offer both urdu and hindi uh, uh, we offer both english and urdu and hindi batches so those students who are right now in the session who are already enrolled so, so uh, this orientation is a combined orientation for both the languages but once you get to the portal once you get the access then after that you have separate content uh, for english and urdu and hindi so the language is different so the combined or common orientation session is being conducted right now but make sure that once you get the uh, uh, portal access or you have the portal access or once you enroll you will get the access then the, the content is differentiated by the languages okay okay now coming back to the paper and the structure of the paper so paper basically uh, is divided into three sections we have section a we have section b and we have section c of your exam uh, i am very much sure that those students who are right now watching this video of financial management orientation they have a very good idea about the paper structure they know what section a is they know what section b is and they know what section c is just to give you a quick idea section a comprises of 15 objective test questions known as ot's these are 15 ot's that are part of your syllabus and uh, for these 15 ot's uh, you 
must have a good grip over the entire book, entire syllabus, I would say, because these 15 OTs can come from any area of the syllabus, can come from any area of your uh, uh, book or the syllabus that is given to you. So these 15 OTs comprises of seven types of questions. I'm sure you guys know, I'm just taking the name of those questions. Uh, it includes multiple choice question known as MCQs. It includes multiple response questions, which means that out of two, three, four, five statements, uh, there could there can be more than one correct answers. It includes true and false uh, questions. Uh, you know that the statement is true or false that you need to select. Plus it includes uh, drop down question, uh, fill in the blank question, uh, hot <coughs> spot question, uh, drag and drop questions. So these are the seven types of OTs that you can expect to come in section A, which can include theory based OTs as well and calculative based OTs as well. Okay, so this is basically a 30 mark area. The second type of uh, question that comes in the paper is section B, where there are three case studies given to you, three case studies given to you, and each case study uh, is connected with five OTs. Each case study is connected with five objective test questions, which means uh, if I say three, that makes it clear, 15 OTs will come when it comes to section B again. But these are scenario based OTs. There is a scenario on one side with five OTs connected with the scenario. So these are not isolated OTs as you have seen in section A. Uh, for these OTs, it is very, very, very important for you to read the scenario carefully so that you are able to solve these five OTs relating to the each case study. So this again comprises uh, for 30 marks. So 60 marks weighted, if you see, uh, basically is totally dependent on OTs, objective test questions, the seven types of OTs that I've already mentioned earlier. So you must prepare yourself well for these OTs, uh, which can include narrative theory based OTs as well as the calculative based OTs. Okay. Now jumping towards the three third area that is section C, which includes constructive response questions. So there are two constructive response questions that will be tested in your examination uh, and uh, the weightage of this area is of 40 marks. So for this area, you need to have two skills, which you I'm sure you have the idea about it. One is the skills of spreadsheet and second is the skills of uh, word processor sheet, which means your typing should be good. You should be good in terms of typing the content. And again, I'm not saying about typing on a cell phone. I know you are really, really superb in that. I know without even looking at the uh, touchpad, you can type. But when I say typing using a keyboard, that is what you need to be ready when it comes to your examination. Okay. A spreadsheet is a very powerful tool, to be honest. A spreadsheet is something that can play a very significant role uh, as far as your FM paper is concerned. Uh, because it will not only save your time, but it will make uh, your uh, uh, presentation look better. Uh, the use of formulas on a spreadsheet will make your life easier. So those who are concerned, oh, we don't know how to use spreadsheet. We are not good at it. First of all, don't worry. By taking my course, I will ensure that if you uh, are lacking in terms of basics that will be covered well. Okay. Secondly, the most important thing is that uh, through my presentation, the way I'll solve questions on a spreadsheet that will give you a very good clarity as to how to solve it in a proper way. And I will try my best to make spreadsheet your strength. I will try my best to convert uh, uh, your weakness if there is as far as spreadsheet is concerned into your strength. So this area relates to 40 marks. Now, as I said earlier, that this paper basically uh, wants you to become a finance manager or it sets the basis for a one to become a finance manager. So the areas that are part of this uh, 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 paper basically are polishing all the skills that are required to become a finance manager. <coughs> now, 
Before I get into the details again about the syllabus area which you can see on this side uh, and how these will test in the paper, uh, there is one thing written here that is the exam is of 3 hours uh, and you have to solve 100 marks in 3 hours which means you have 180 minutes altogether to solve 100 marks. Uh, a basic math would give you the answer that you have 1.8 minutes per mark. Okay, so you just need to keep in mind 1.8 minutes per mark is what you have to keep in your mind. And why I'm telling this today is the time management problem is a crucial thing. You should know that you have to manage time well. You should know maybe you have experienced yourself in the past or you have heard a lot from your friends that yes, we are not able to to complete the paper on time. So considering all those things, you must make sure that you keep this standard in your mind, 1.8 minutes per mark. And according to that, you will be uh, solving and practicing all the stuff. And all my guidance will definitely take into account this 1.8 minutes per mark. Now, let's dive into the syllabus of financial management friends. <coughs> starting from the first area is investment appraisal. Now here I want my audience to be very careful and listen very carefully what I'm trying to say because there might be students who have already paid for my course and they are part of the batch so I want to guide them as well and those who are still thinking should we join WIFI or should we join financial management for this time so they should also know the course content which is really really interesting I'll try my best to make this interesting for you as well uh, and for that I want you guys to also respond me in the comment section but not right now I will uh, ask you later on today uh, and we'll also address all your questions if you have at the end of the session we'll have a proper Q&A as well. So starting with investment appraisal if I say first what investment appraisal is so investment appraisal basically uh, the introduction of this topic uh, was already done when you were giving your management accounting paper MA paper so at that particular time uh, the 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 uh, the introduction of investment appraisal made it clear that there are four basic techniques that you should know. I just take the name of the techniques here so that you can recall those. It includes net present value, which is the most important one, followed by that is IRR, followed by that is payback and ARR. So these are the four techniques that were introduced at a very basic level when you were giving your MA management accounting exam. So here at FM level, uh, we will be discussing these techniques in a more detailed way. And we will be using these techniques as a technique, uh, as the techniques for taking investment decision. Let's suppose you have uh, $100,000 available. I don't know whether you have or not. Uh, if you have, so do keep it safely, please. So if you're thinking to invest those $100,000 somewhere, so you, you, you need to come up with different options available for investment. For example, you can invest in a pharmaceutical business or you can invest in some agriculture business or you can uh, invest in some uh, clothing business or you can uh, uh, basically do something else, open, open up your own system, own factory, own manufacturing. So there are multiple options that are available to you. So if you are thinking where to invest those $100,000, this section is for you. This section will help you. This section is the guidance one that uh, will help you to decide where should you invest. Where should you invest? This means you will be using techniques like NPV, IRR, payback, ARR. So these are the decision making techniques uh, through which you will decide which option is the most lucrative option, which option is the one that you uh, think you need to invest into. So this section investment appraisal gives you the clarity as to where to invest. Come on, repeat with me when I say what investment appraisal is. So you guys should say uh, in the comment section what investment appraisal is. It is about where to invest. So you take a decision where you have to invest using the techniques which I already mentioned earlier, uh, <coughs> NPV, IRR, payback and ARR. Okay, now uh, after learning that 
where to invest through investment appraisal techniques, the next area that we see is known as business finance. Yes, in continuation to my previous example, I can very clearly say here that you had an idea to make an investment and you had $100,000 for example. Or I can say like this, that you need $100,000 for this particular investment. But now you think that you actually don't have the funds available, for example. So you need to raise the finance. You need to raise the finance and how you're going to raise the finance. So this second area known as business finance is a one that will deal with how to raise the finance. What options do you have to raise the finance? So guys, can you quickly come up here? What options do we have to raise the finance? Any good options if you can come up with uh, those right now. So uh, yes, you will be saying that yeah, equity is the option. We can raise equity finance uh, to, to get the finance. Number two, we have uh, another option known as debt finance. Yes. So these are the multiple options available in form of equity finance and debt finance. These basically are those uh, that can provide finance to the business. So this section will basically discuss the options available to raise finance because it's not just equity. It includes different other types in equity as well, like retained earning, like right issues, like new issue in form of placing and public offer. So these are different types of equity finance. When I say debt finance, there are so many different options available when it comes to debt finance, like you have bank loans, like you have bonds, like you have overdraft. So these are the different options available to raise the finance. So my friends, business finance will go into the details of different options of raising finance with their positives, with their negatives, what good things about them, what bad things about them will be discussed in this particular section of business finance. But this section also includes a very important concept, which I'm sure you must have heard earlier uh, in your previous papers. And that concept is known as cost of capital. Yes, you can see here the word VAC written here. So this is weighted average cost of capital. Let me repeat. This is weighted average cost of capital known as VAC. Now, what the concept of VAC is about? What is VAC? What, what is the concept of VAC? So this is what I have to explain you here. So listen very carefully. Uh, for example, you need $100,000 for the investment that I just mentioned earlier. Uh, you know where you have to invest. You have done the investment appraisal uh, 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 and you know uh, which project is the best one for you. But the problem is to raise the finance. Now, what you did, you thought of coming up with $50,000 from your friend and your friend has uh, uh, promised you to provide you $50,000. So your friend will become your equity partner and your friend will be called as what friends? Shareholder. Yeah, he will be the shareholder. So your friend is a shareholder and he'll be giving you $50,000. Now, what about the other $50,000? So you came up with the option to raise finance through bank. Uh, you thought, okay, I can use bank here and I'll get the funds from the bank in form of a loan. So uh, you took $50,000 from bank. Now, $50,000 came from the shareholder, $50,000 came from the bank. So if you add these two together, this comes up out, this, 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 this comes up to 100,000. This is what you needed at the end of the day. Now, you said, thank you very much, my friend. Thank you very much, bang. You turned your back and you're moving like this. So they call you, hello, 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 hello. Where are you going? You said, what happened? First, your friend will say, I need a return. Oh, so you're like, oh, I thought you were giving me uh, just for free. What about our friendship? He's like, come on, don't be stupid. What kind of friendship you're talking about? I need return on this. Oh, yes, you need a return. Fine. So how much return do you need? He said, let's suppose he said 15% return I need on my equity. Fine. 15% return I need on my equity is what you need to focus on, is what you to think. Uh, yeah, I need to pay him 15%. Because the funds that I took 
is not for free. Because the funds that I have is not for free. I have to give a return on those funds. So this is basically a return for the person who is giving me. This means this is a return for my friend. But for me, as I'm taking the funds, I have to pay him 15%. So this 15% will be my cost, will be my cost of getting the equity. Are you with me everyone? Will be my cost of getting equity. Seems okay, seems reasonable, seems fine. Fine. You said, okay, fine, done. I, I, I understand. Now, again, you are going back. Bank call you. Hello, where are you going? You took 50,000 bucks from me. I need interest on that. I need interest on that. This interest is my income. So you were like, okay, fine. Uh, I know I need to pay you interest. And he said, I need 10% interest. You said, fine. Now, 50,000 bucks that you took from the shareholder, you need to give him return of 15%. That is a cost for you. Uh, $15,000 that you took from the bank, you need to pay them 10% as an interest. And that again is a cost for you. That is an income for the bank, but it's a cost for you, which means you have figured out there are two types of costs that you need to pay. One for getting equity, one for getting debt. So for you, it is cost of getting the capital. This is what cost of getting the capital. And we can call this as cost of capital because this is a cost for getting equity because this is a cost for getting debt. And you need to realize this, that this is a cost for you. And it is not just a cost. You have to make sure that you do pay those costs to the shareholders and the bank, which means this topic known as weighted average cost of capital will teach you how to calculate the cost of these capitals that I've mentioned here. And it will basically emphasize on one thing, and that is wherever I'm going to invest these $100,000, whatever project that I've selected using investment appraisal. So wherever I'll be investing these $100,000, I have to make sure that my project should be good enough to cover the cost of equity, the cost of debt, in short, should cover cost of capital. In short, should cover weighted average cost of capital. So we have to make sure we cover this combined cost of equity and debt known as weighted average cost of capital. So wherever we invest, it is important to make sure that we cover this cost and this is something we have to keep in our mind. So guys, to sum up, this means this section number two will teach you from where to raise finance. Come on. Is that okay, everyone? Uh, if I say business finance, so what comes to your mind? From where to get the finance? Good. Come on, you have to say this. From where to get the finance? And what is the cost of that finance? And what is the cost of that finance? So investment appraisal will teach you where to invest. Business finance will teach you from where to raise the funds. And what is the cost of that? So far, interesting financial management going on. Yes or no, guys? Are you with me? Come on, be active here. Okay, done with these two things. Then comes, then let's come towards third area known as business valuation. Very important skill in today's world. As a finance person, uh, you might be working in a company uh, that wants to acquire another company. You might be working in a company that is planning to merge with another company. You might be working in a company that wants to invest in shares of any other company. You might want to do investment on your own as well. So it is very important to make sure that you should know how to value a business. You should know how to value a share. This is known as business valuation because we need to know the value of a business in case of acquisition, in case of merger. If I want to buy a business, 
at what price should I buy? So to come to that price, I should know the value of the business, right? Similarly, in case of liquidation, uh, we should know the value of the business because the business is liquidating. In case of litigation, we should know the value of the business. So there are so many reasons to know the value of the business. And the most simple reason is if you have some surplus cash and you want to buy shares of different companies, so you should know the stock prices, the share prices that are in the market. Are these reflecting the true performance of the business? So who would tell you? You can value the company yourself. You can calculate the share price of the company to know whether the value that is being shown uh, in the stock market is the valid one or not. So business valuation will teach you different methods through which you can value a company. Very interesting, very relevant for your finance world. So you'll, so you'll be looking at techniques like asset-based valuation, discounted cash flow-based valuation techniques, income-based valuation techniques. And through this, you'll be learning, okay, this is how we will actually learn how to value a business, okay? A very famous merger uh, we guys know was between Uber and Kareem. In fact, it was a takeover, I should say. Uh, so it was between Uber and Kareem, right? So Uber actually took over Kareem. So that was a very famous uh, 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 takeover. So for that takeover to happen, it was very important for both the companies to exactly know the value of uh, Kareem, the company that we are trying to buy. Kareem owners wanted to know what is their value. Uber wanted to know what is the value of Kareem in order to negotiate and come to the best selling and the buying price, right? So this is the section that will help you in terms of valuation. Done. The next is working capital. Yes, it is very important for every business, whether it's a small business, it's a large business, even it is very important for uh, someone who is running a house, maybe for a housewife, maybe for a husband to make sure that uh, proper finances are managed. In fact, it is very important for you guys. You have to manage your own pocket money. If you do get pocket money, you have to manage pocket money. You do manage your pocket money because if you won't manage your pocket money, at the end of the day, you will be in a severe liquidity shortage, which is the case every time, right? You're every time in huge liquidity shortage. So working capital is very important for every business. As I always say that as, as a human body, we need to have some energy to perform daily operations. If you won't take sufficient amount of food on a daily basis, we cannot perform daily operations. We cannot perform daily uh, operations or we cannot do daily routine work. So we need to have certain minimum amount of food intake to have that energy to do that work. Similarly, my friends, similarly, my friends, you have to realize the fact that business also needs minimum amount of cash to run the daily operations. As human body needs food to ensure daily operations are done in the right way. Similarly, a business wants cash to ensure daily smooth operations are running on a daily basis. Like we need to pay maintenance bills, we need to pay rentals, we need to pay salaries. We need to have cash for that. We need to ensure, uh, we need to uh, resolve any urgent uh, maintenance problem, any, any other repair maintenance issue. So we need to have cash for that. If we won't have cash, then we will not be able to do smooth business. So working capital is the minimum amount of funds needed to run the daily operations to be able to incur expenses on a daily basis. Because if you look at the formula of working capital, do you guys know the formula of working capital? Yes, the formula of working capital is current asset minus current liabilities, right? Current asset minus current liability is the formula of working capital. So considering this formula, you have to make sure that this is the minimum amount of finance needed to ensure smooth running of business day-to-day -day operations. For example, you do a business where you offer uh, good credit terms to the customers and you ask them to pay you in two months time. You give them two months credit. Now, the question is, if they pay you in two months time, what about you paying salaries to your employees, 
you paying rental to your landlord, would you ask them, okay, once I get the money from my customers after two months, I'll pay you. You cannot do this. You need to have funds in your pocket to finance yourself until and unless we don't receive the payment from the customer, we as a company should be good enough to pay the rentals, uh, the, the salaries to the employees and other vendors in order to ensure a smooth running of the business. So I hope this is clear to all of you. This is how important working capital is and we will be learning how to manage this important thing of working capital because this is important for the survival of the business. What I said, survival of the business. A business is not profitable, it's fine. But a business is, if, if the business can sustain itself in losses, it can fund itself in losses, it has good liquidity, it will soon become a profitable business. So this is how important the management of funds is and this is known as working capital. Okay, so far, investment appraisal does what, guys? Investment appraisal tells you where to invest. Business finance will help you to decide from where to raise the finance and what is the cost of that. Business valuation will teach you how to value your business. Working capital will teach you how to manage working capital in order to ensure smooth running of the business. So I hope you're finding FM interesting so far because these are the daily skills any individual needs, any organization needs and even this fund management skill is very important for any housewife or husband as well. So these are routine things that we uh, do in our daily lives but we have to learn this in a professional way through this paper financial management. Now coming towards the last section by the name of risk management. Yes, what is risk management? So there are two areas that comes under risk management that I precisely want to tell you. First area is the currency risk and second is the interest rate risk. Okay, so I'll first start with currency risk here. Uh, what currency risk is and how much important is the currency risk that you need to actually understand and learn. So when I say currency risk, uh, people who are facing a serious adverse movement in exchange rate know how important currency management is. Like students who are from those part of the world where the currency uh, continuously depreciates for them. So for them paying ACCA exam fee is getting expensive and expensive and expensive every time. Because by the time they think of paying the fee, because their local currency has depreciated against the UK pounds, so they have to pay more for the ACCA exam fee. So this is known as currency management, which is a very common matter for any ACCA individual as well. So in case of risk management, uh, currency management will teach you how to manage the currency risk. As I already gave you an example, for example, if you wanted to pay examination fee uh, today and you went to your father and said hello dad I need to pay one pound for example okay today uh, one pound for example today and that comes out to be for example in UA terms if I say for example I, I'm not going through the exact numbers for example uh, that comes out to be uh, like uh, five uh, dirhams right five dirhams for example so if you want to pay uh, exam fee one pound that is equal to five dirhams uh, today but you went to your father and your father like no I don't have funds today uh, come to me after one month before the examination date uh, is getting is, is getting closed. So he said okay so after one month when you went to your father and said hello dad I want to pay one pound for my exam fee uh, so please give me the funds. So Previously, if your father had this in your mind, okay, I, I need to give him five dirhams uh, in order to pay one pound. So once he gave you five dirhams, you were like, no father, now uh, the exchange movement uh, resulted in, in a depreciation of the local currency, the UAE dirham. So now I need six dirhams to pay one pound. Oh, your father is like, what happened? Why are we paying additional one dirham? That is because 
depreciation took place because the local currency dirhams depreciated against the UK pound and that is why this is, it is costing you more now in terms of exam fee. So this is known as exchange loss. The one dirham that we're going to pay extra is exchange loss, is exchange loss. Now, in this section, we learn how to avoid those expected future losses, how to protect ourselves against those expected future exchange losses. And now listen to the word, how to hedge yourself, how to hedge yourself against those future expected losses is what you learn in this section of currency uh, management that comes at the risk management. I hope you're getting the idea what this is all about. The other area that comes under this is known as interest rate risk management that again is very relevant for the companies. Uh, for example, if a company wants to borrow uh, some loan, not now after five months, after six months, after seven months. So there is always a risk factor involved and what is that? Come on, can you come up with the risk factor? What is the risk factor? The risk factor is the interest rate that I'm getting today might not be the same interest rate when I want to borrow in three months time, in four months time, in five months time. There is a possibility, there is a risk that the interest rate might jump, that might go up and it can result in additional interest costs. So this section again will teach you how to protect yourself against the future, future expected interest uh, increase, the cost of that, and this is what you will learn in risk management. So I hope you are understanding uh, this very clearly that this financial management is the right paper that will prepare you, that should prepare you uh, to become a good finance professional in the corporate world and the bases are here. The bases will start from FM that goes on further to your advanced financial management paper. The good you are at this level, the better you'll perform when it comes to your AFM paper later on. So I hope this is clear to all of you. Uh, let's have a quick recap and I want you guys to please uh, quickly answer me in the chat box. Everyone, are you with me? Be active. You have to respond me in the chat box that what exactly these topics will uh, uh, teach you or what you learn from these topics. So I need a quick reply from you people. Are you ready guys? Yes or no? If you are ready, so come on, quickly answer me. Investment appraisal. What will investment appraisal do? It will teach you where to invest. Very good, very good. <coughs> Do give your responses in the chat box, okay? Number two, business finance. What business finance will do? Oh, very good, very good. My mind is connected with your heart. I know what you are thinking. So come on, think good, okay? So yeah, it will give you the idea from where to raise the finance and the cost of that finance. Cost of the finance, very good. Number three, business valuation. What business valuation will teach you? Very nice. How to value a business. How to value a business. Next, working capital. What working capital will teach you? Yes, how to manage daily cash. Daily cash. Okay. <clears throat> daily working capital. Risk management will teach you how to protect yourself against the future expected exchange and interest losses. Okay. So this is all about financial management. I hope if someone will ask you about the paper, basic boundaries, outlines, so you are good enough now, you can explain them the basics. Is that right? Yes or no? <clears throat> you know the basics now everyone? Right, good. So, done with the basics of uh, financial management, now how these will be tested in the examination. So, investment appraisal can come uh, in all the three areas of the paper, section A, B and C. So, that's clear. Business finance, again, can come at any level of the examination. So, you have to be mentally prepared for that. Business valuation 
yes is the section that will not be tested in CRQs. This will not come in CRQs, will only be tested in section A and B, A and B. So there is a very highly likely chance that this will come in section B. One question will be related from business valuation. Working capital can come anywhere, whereas risk management will again be a one that can uh, that will not come in section C, CRQs, similar to business valuation. So these two are the areas that will not be tested in CRQ. So it, there is a very high chance that you can expect a scenario based question section B uh, as far as business valuation is concerned and also in relation to risk management. So these are the two likely areas to come in section B business valuation and risk management. This is the first thing that is very much clear. Another question that you can expect to come in section C for sure shot is investment appraisal. So this is a past history of the examiner that investment appraisal is a one that comes uh, in section C. So you can expect one question of 20 marks coming up in section C from investment appraisal and the other two questions of section B uh, are expected to come from business valuation and risk management. So I hope the paper structure, the clarity is there. Paper pattern is clear to all of you. Now the question is, why should we take classes from Wi-Fi? Why not some other platform? Why you only? So now this is a very important slide which will give clarity to the students who are still thinking, should we join Wi-Fi or not? So first of all, Wi-Fi is an ACCA gold approved learning partner for online delivery. We are an ALP working since 2017 and we have uh, been into this teaching of online students since more than five years. Uh, more than 30,000 students have taken classes from Wi-Fi. Uh, so this means the quality that we focus on is the most differentiated feature of Wi-Fi. Now, let me tell you why. First, we have recorded sessions. These recorded sessions are learning glass based. You can see today, you can see me, this is a learning glass technology in front of you. So these sessions are based on learning glass technology and these lectures are animated lectures. Uh, Fun-filled videos, I would say. These are pre-recorded ones, short videos with animations that will increase your chances of understanding and interest as well. Also, for these recorded sessions, we don't keep you alone. We, we just not provide you the recorded sessions. In fact, we provide you a planner with them as well. A proper planner will be given to you. Now, those students who are already paid, today you will be getting the planners, you will be getting the weekly targets now to achieve. Every week we'll be giving you a target what to achieve in the next upcoming week, okay? So these recorded sessions are uh, planner-based recorded sessions that you have to cover. Then comes the live classes. Now there are six live classes that we take at Wi-Fi uh, and we encourage you people to cover the content from the recorded area before coming into the live class. As we give you the weekly targets, so you have to achieve those weekly targets before getting into the live class because this is how your live class be becomes interactive. And yes, this is a live class. This is not a recorded session. So live class is different to recorded session where you can see more interaction with the tutor. We ask questions, we respond to that. Uh, you can ask the questions, your camera should be open in the class to have an interactiveness, which is very important. So this is a live class. Every week we'll be having a live class. And before this live class, you have to make sure that you cover the weekly plan, the target that we'll be giving you. Now, right after the uh, live classes, <coughs> you will be given the plans every week accordingly. Then we have e-notes. These are downloadable uh, notes that are available to you. It includes not just the detailed notes. In fact, the summaries that I've also prepared so that you can take benefit of the summaries as well. Now, after that, we have a very good model by the name of TTA model. This is a very unique model of testing uh, your performance, of building the confidence because what we believe at Wifi is until and unless you don't test yourself, until and unless you don't prepare yourself for exam, you cannot pass. 
watching videos is a good thing but at the end of the day you need to have the confidence to appear in the examination for that preparation we have a tta model here let me explain you the first t of this model the first t of this model is test yourself yes this is what test yourself now what is test yourself test yourself basically are the questions that are available on the portal uh, which will give you the opportunity to test yourself and these are time based questions so there are there is there, there are time there, there are minutes allotted to this question so you have to solve that question within the allotted minutes okay so this is known as test yourself so you will see uh, very frequently on your portal after the coverage of a major chunk there will be a one question that will allow you to test yourself within the time limits the other t is the testing platform uh, the ot's that are uh, required for you to complete so these testing platform ot's uh, you can complete and you can enhance your practice uh, to get the confidence so these uh, uh, testing platform ot's are now available on study hub as well you have the revision kits as well and we have our own portal as well from where you can practice the third is a assignments yes after every live class after every live class you will be given an assignment this assignment is something that you have to uh, you have to solve because we'll give you a week time uh, and we'll check the assignment our marketing team will check the assignment and will give you the feedback so if there are six live classes, so there are six assignments that you need to do. Remember, it's all about passing the exam. And if you want to pass the paper, it is not only sufficient to watch the videos. In fact, you have to follow this TTA model, which is specifically designed for you in order to get the results. Okay. So I hope this TTA model, which is a unique thing, will help you to gain the confidence uh, before the examination. But this will not end. Because next we have mocks. Yes, these mocks are again uh, something that will boost your confidence. So there are two mocks that are available. Uh, one mock will be a live mock that we'll conduct at the end of the session. We'll check the mock. We'll give you the feedback. It's a complete examination mock. After that, there will be another complementary mock known as mock 2 that you have the opportunity to solve. But for both the mocks, the best part is that we will be conducting debrief sessions for the mock. Now, what is a debrief? Where we will be solving the entire mock for you. Once you will do, we'll check, we'll give you the scores. Then we'll do a debrief of the mock where we'll check, sorry, we'll solve the entire mock that will give you more clarity in a detailed way that what went wrong as far as you are concerned. Okay. And again, this will not end because we have a grand revision session to be held at the end and this revision sessions includes 9 to 10 hours of revision uh, in form of live classes other than these live classes. These are six separate and these three are separate where we uh, revise the uh, material at the end by solving more new questions and also an overall uh, uh, summary of the concepts of the paper. So these 9 to 10 hour sessions are conducted at the end to further enhance and ensure that you are ready before the examination. On top of it, we have teacher assistant facility available all the time. In our paid groups, you will see teacher assistant working every time. There are support staff available. Uh, there are teacher assistants separately for managing the portal issues because one will be giving you the planners, the targets, progress, attendance will be done and the other TAs would be the technical TAs would be helping you in terms of your concepts, your technical queries will be solved and will be assisting you in your assignments. So we have a good team of TAs working with me because I'll be part of the WhatsApp group. I will be part of the group. You can be part of the group and uh, the entire WIFI team of assistants will be there as well. And that is why I say that WIFI is unique in terms of providing quality education to the students. So this is how we teach at WIFI. So if you guys are interested in joining our batch, so you have to contact the support team. Support team 
will be available at this number. You can contact them. Uh, they will provide you the details for the enrollment, registration, and they will add you in the paid WhatsApp group, the class group, okay? Plus, if you want to be part of the general groups as well, WIFI has its free groups for financial management where there are global students available for general support. So you can ask the team. They will also share the link of the general group there as well. And I'm part of that group with my other tutor number uh, that is part of that group. So uh, this is the support number. Contact the support for enrollment. If you like my orientation, if you are convinced that yes, WIFI will be your best study partner, then don't wait and join and experience yourself. Secondly, I'm the principal at this institute as well because I run this institute in the capacity of a CEO and the principal. So this is as this is my official direct number as a principal, as a CEO. If you want to contact me for any other query, any other guidance, any other help, you can uh, contact me at this number in the capacity of a CEO and the principal for further guidance as well. Other than my tutorship, you can contact me for any other guidance. Okay, so these are the numbers. I hope this is clear to all of you uh, and you are ready for the exams. Now, let's have a quick Q&A session. So guys, if you have any queries, kindly please ask right now uh, and I will be happy to answer you. Over to you guys. Okay, which book should we take? We will be focusing on Study Hub material. Uh, I don't think you need any textbook right now. Uh, the notes are sufficient. And if anything I want to add will be done through Study Hub. Yes, for theory, I'm saying that. So uh, as far as theory is concerned, I will cover all the things. But if there is something that I feel we need, we'll use Study Hub other than the notes. Yes, please. Any other question, anyone? Okay. Notes are available to the uh, paid students. Definitely. They are part of the paid batch. Uh, students who are doing self-study, they can refer to our webinars available on our YouTube channel. And uh, with that webinar, there are uh, webinar free material available. Not very much, but yeah, you can use that and you can even use Study Hub as well. Okay, if you are weak in theory, so don't worry. If you are weak in theory, uh, don't worry. Uh, in my classes, I will make sure I build uh, uh, the concepts of theory well. If you are bad in drafting, don't worry. You are at the right place. I'll make sure that your drafting becomes your strength. For kit, yes, I think uh, Kaplan and BP kit both are useful for practice. So uh, we will be targeting both the kits. On my portal, I've covered both the kits. So if you target both, that will be excellent. Okay. Reading the theory notes, I think, yeah, it would help the, the notes that I will provide along with the video lectures. You will cover a lot of things, but uh, going through the handout would also further re-emphasize. So, yeah, it's good to read that. Okay. So, I hope uh, this is clear to all of you. Now, the paid students who are already paid, now the weekly target will be shared to you right after the session. Uh, and you have to start your plan before the next live class. Before that next live class, which will be our first class, you have to cover the topic that has been given to you in the planner uh, before the live class. Uh, and that will ensure that your live class become effective. Uh, and those who are still thinking, yes, if you want to, then you don't have time. Uh, you can join our batch. Yes, one thing I need to clarify here, you can join either our September batch or June batch. Those who want to give in June, they can enroll in June batch. But those who want to uh, study uh, uh, for a longer period of time, they can get into September batch. This is the first time we is offering September batch along with the regular June batch. Previously, we used to start September batch after the result. But so many students requested us to start earlier. 
So we have started our September batch as well this time. Uh, you can enroll in the September batch. Every facility is same. Everything is same uh, when it comes to June and September batch with the major differences for September, you have more time to study. So those who are interested in September can join in September. Those who are interested in June can join in June uh, and let's connect together uh, uh, either in September or June batch. Yes, this is clear that June batches uh, groups are separate. Groom, groom, June batches planners are separate. September batches planners are separate. So we'll be dealing both the audience separately, which is very good from a student perspective. I hope the session went well for you guys. Uh, guys, what is your quick feedback? How was the orientation today? Did you like the session in terms of knowledge, understood the things about the paper? Happy or not? Guys, are you happy with the session? Please kindly share your feedback in the comment section. And I'm sure you understood what FM is like, where to invest, from where to raise finance, how to manage cash, how to protect yourself against adverse movement in exchange and interest rates. Okay, so I hope the session went well. Thank you very much for attending this orientation. Uh, paid students, your time has started now. Portal is ready, waiting for you to start your studies. Those who are thinking to join, don't think, just join and feel the difference yourself, either in June or September batch. Thank you very much. Rizwan Mania signing off. See you soon in the first live class. Until then, take care. Bye.